Hi, I'm Ash. This is Two Thin Coats. Today we're going to be turning this into this in just half an hour. I've got two identical Space Marines. We're going to speed paint the one as an Ultramarine and the other we're going to take our time with. It'll probably take us about a whole night to paint the other one. So we're going to start off with a thin down base layer of Teclas Blue. We're going to put this on all over the armour. Um, it doesn't matter if any goes on the base or any of the weapons because we'll be base coating those after. We're just putting one thin coat. I know, it's a surprise. Um, because in a minute we'll be putting a darker and a slightly lighter layer on top because this is speed painting we just want to get it done as quick as possible now this is probably the longest part of the process um, other than letting them dry the painting time for this was about 28 minutes total um, so that's not including letting any of the paint dry I did have the hairdryer on hand um, just to speed up the process but it was probably an hour total with the, the drawing times as well. But if you've got a batch of Space Marines to paint, then by the time you've finished painting the last one, the first one should be dry. So as you can see, there's a little bit going on to the gun, but when we uh, go over the gun with the red, that'll tidy that back up. Got a few spots on the base as well, but again, we're gonna go over that in a gray. Now just onto Scrag Brown to the base coat, all the pouches around the belt. We'll also put base coat on any um, purity seals. There's one on the backpack of this one and the gun holster. Just slapping it on. Again, a little bit of the blue is showing through, but when this is finished, you won't notice any of that. It's quick, it's easy. You can get an entire unit painted in the night just applying it quite thin and this will give it just a little bit of natural shading it'll pull a little bit in the recesses making it slightly darker and on the raised areas slightly lighter it's almost like doing a wash and then we'll make that even darker when we eventually do wash it later on and now it's on to evil sun scarlet gonna be using that for the weapons, the, the gun and the chainsaw. Just cover the whole thing. We will pick out a few areas later on that'll be a silver um good metal colour. As you can see from a few of these angles, it is quite blotchy the paint. But the next step, well the next two steps, will give it a nice even colour all over and some nice highlights, even though it's only been painted in less than half an hour. Now don't worry if you haven't got the exact red or blue or brown or grey. You can mix them. If it's a darker red, add a little bit of white. If it's a brighter blue, add a little bit of black. Here we're using Administratum Grey. That's nice and easy to make with a little bit of black, a little bit of white. We're just applying that grey all over the base. We'll let it come round and touch up the rim of the base with a nice black once everything else is painted. Just going over that with a second coat just to darken it up, make sure it's a nice even colour for the grey. So now to add some darker highlights, this is Macrogi Blue um, and I'm sort of stippling it on. I've dried the brush a little bit but not as much as you would with a normal dry brush so it's leaving like tiny dots it's not quite a dry brush but it's not as wet as they normally paint it and we're just stippling that on in all the areas that would get a little bit of shadow so under the arms under the legs and then we repeat the process with the lighter color firm blue just picking out all the praised areas the uh, the bits that would be catching the sun so anything that's on top of it, especially the shoulder pads because they're a big flat area. And then we go over all the blue areas 
with Nightshade. Alternatively, you can use Noel Nile, but the Draconoth Nightshade has got sort of a bluish tint to it, so it works perfectly for the blue armor of an Ultramarine. And just slapping that on. We'll go back and any areas that are pulling too dark, we'll draw some away with our brush, but we're just slapping that on. And as you can see, that'll tie in all those blotchy areas, especially on the big areas like the shoulder pads and on the backpack. If you are using Null Nile, you can just go over the entire miniature because um, we're about to go over the red areas with Null Oil in a second. And while the Draconoth Nightshade's still drying, we can go in with the Null Oil and just go over all of the weapons, any of the red, get it into the recesses. You don't want it to pull too much on the flat areas, especially on the blade of the Chainsword. Um, but you can go a bit heavier round the actual chain parts because in a minute we're going to be painting that with some abaddon black and then going over to highlight it with a silver just put the null oil all over the base as well once that's dry it's compulsory to knock the miniature over um, and then move on to dry brushing so we're just going to dry brush now with the original blue techless blue and do that all over the armor as you can see oh yeah just brush the brush against my thumb just to see how much paint it's actually going to put onto the miniature you don't want a lot you just want it to catch all the raised edges you just do that on all the blue armor i'm just using a cheap makeup brush for my dry brush and then we go on to the highlight color that we used before which was low thumb blue Alternatively, you can use your original blue, just add a little bit of white into it, and then dry brush that. Always go in from top to bottom, so it looks like the light is hitting it downwards. Try not to get any of the areas that would be in shadow. Now, with the bad and black, I'm going in and painting any of the areas that I want to be silver. So, all of the little teeth of the chainsaw, and then the little vent on the train sword as well, as well as the pommel, and a few areas around on the gun. So the barrel of the gun, as well as the clip. And then go in and just pick out the ribbed areas on uh, his forearms, like the under armor areas and the backs of the knees as well as a few little metallic bits on the backpack. And then while the abaddon black is still drying, we'll go in with the Evil Sun Scarlet, a smaller detail brush, and just pick out the eye lenses. It's quite difficult to do, especially with a camera in the way. Sorry about it being a little bit blurry. While all those parts are drying, getting the dry brush back out and going back in with the original grey colour we used and just dry brushing over all the stone. I am also dry brushing around the boots and the lower part of the leg just to make them look a little bit dusty, adds a bit of character. It's a quick easy step while you're dry brushing the base and it really adds a bit of character to the model. And then with even less paint on the dry brush this time I'm using a slightly smaller dry brush, going over all the stone again and the very, very bottoms of the boots. And then adding a little bit of white in with the original brown that we used for the pouches. And just dry brushing all the pouches and brown areas. And that will just bring out the details on all of those using a smaller dry brush again. And don't forget the purity seal on any of his backpacks or shoulder pads. Now the final detail we're picking out is all the gold areas. So this is the rim of the shoulder pads as well as the aquila on his chest. You might want to pick out a few small areas as well like maybe any knee pads or if there's any uh, skulls hanging from 
his belt on this one on his right of embrace he'd got a little uh, emblem I painted with the gold just take your time with this step try not to get any of the gold on the blue if you do it's not a problem we can touch it up later with the original blue we used but the more careful you are now the easier it is once all those gold areas are finished then get your silver of choice in this case we're using mithril silver and just picking out any of those bits that we've already added the black to as well as a few nuts and bolts i'm leaving a little bit of the black showing on the teeth of the chain sword as well as in the recesses on the vents on the backpack and then when we move over to the gun barrel i'm painting the outside of the gun barrel but leaving the holes showing as black once all the silver is painted, we then take a little bit of Agrax Earthshade and just with a small brush, being very specific where we put it, putting it on the gold areas, just letting it go into the recesses, but you don't want it to pull too much on the flat areas. We do that on all the gold, not forgetting the one on his arm and the shoulder pads. And then... There's only one thing left to do, and that is paint the rim of the base. I'm just going in with a bad and black all the way around the rim. Try not to get any on the flat area on the top that we've already dry brushed. And there you have it. Just 28 minutes to get this Space Marine painted start to finish to a tabletop standard. There are a few extra steps we can do if you want to take it to the next level. But as you can see, it's already looking really good. So we'll start off using the lighter blue, the Lotharian blue, and with a little bit of Lamium medium or water. Lamium medium is better for this. And we're just going to be highlighting some of the edges. So all the top edges, knee pads, and the helmet as well as when the hands all the armor pieces just give it a little bit of a gleam but first before it dries it can seem quite a stark contrast but because we've watered it down so much as it dries it evens out go around the model highlighting each of the panel lines if you make any mistakes don't worry just go in with the original blow and neaten it back up but because it's so thin you shouldn't notice alternatively if you've put too much on in an area you can use a wet brush just to wipe it away before it dries we then do the same with the red just added a little bit of white into the evil sun scarlet and just picking out a couple of the edges on the red weapons the top edges there and then we're going in with liberator gold just to pick out some of the highlights on all the gold areas alternatively if you haven't got liberator gold you can add a little bit of your retribute drama to your silver color and that makes a nice highlight for your gold areas just picking out one or two of the highest spots and a couple of areas on the rim of the shoulder pads there's one or two highlights although it only takes a couple of minutes but it really does add a lot of realism Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and do all the YouTube things. Till next time, bye bye.